uh, the job search. Whether it's your first job or your fifth job, the process can be very frustrating and confusing. So in this series, I'm going to try to cover everything you need to know when you're applying for an architecture job, including how to build your portfolio, how to put that portfolio online, how to write your resume and your cover letter, the importance of having an online presence, and also some interview tips and how to talk about your work and your experience. But in today's video, we will be talking about the most important thing of all, the portfolio. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dami and I'm a licensed architect in beautiful Vancouver, BC. On this channel, we talk about architecture and design and also some tools and strategies that can help you have more meaningful and fulfilling careers in architecture. So what exactly is a portfolio? A portfolio is simply the most important artifact of your existence as an architect. But seriously, guys, without a portfolio, you will not get anywhere in architecture. It's a professional statement of who you are, what you like, how you work, and it's going to speak for you when you're not there. So no matter what stage of your education or career you're in, you should be constantly thinking about how what you're doing right now can supplement your portfolio. Your portfolio is going to contain your CV or resume, an about me page, and the portfolio, which is the visual collection of your work. And so today we're going to be covering the collection of work and how to create one through six simple, somewhat simple steps. <laughs> we will go through project selection, image selection, determining a format, designing a layout, designing your front cover, and also at the end, I'll show you how you can get a hold of these templates that I've created for you. So what are the qualities of a good portfolio? First, you have to show the process and not just the finished work. Second, you have to tell a story and it's not just a collection of projects. And third, you have to demonstrate your passion, but also show your hard skills. You will want to strike a balance between showing your creativity and, you know, proving that you're a good designer and showing them that you have the skills that it's going to provide tangible value to the firm. And this part really comes from really understanding the position you're applying for and uh, what kind of person they need and what kind of work they do. I've mostly worked at small firms, so I've reviewed a lot of portfolios and really listened in on the interviews and the principal's impression of the candidate. We had this one girl who came in for an interview and she had a beautiful portfolio full of uh, watercoloring and uh, model and she wrote a really nice personal cover letter. But although we really liked her work and she proved her skills as a designer, the principal got the impression that she was too careful and that she wouldn't be able to work fast enough to keep up with the project. And she was applying for an internship position, but she didn't really show any uh, digital modeling skills or rendering skills, which was uh, another downside. So you just need to try to understand what the work you're showing implies and try to strike a careful balance between showing that you're a good designer and that you can provide that tangible value to the firm that, that they're going to need to get the projects rolling efficiently. That story also shows that no matter how good your work is, you might get rejected for a reason that's completely unknown to you. So I wouldn't get too discouraged. So before we get into the meat of it, I just want to note here that every portfolio and cover letter that you send out should be tailored to the firm that you're applying for. But you might be saying, But Dami, I'm applying to 50 different firms. I don't have time to put together 50 different portfolios. To that, I would say, Suck it up. I'm just kidding. That's when having a master portfolio can come in really handy. It's a collection of all of your work and that way whenever you apply to a firm you can just pick and choose which projects you want to show it takes a little bit more time to get started but i think it can really help you in the long run especially if you've just graduated from school and you have to send out like 50 applications to multiple firms most firms still prefer a PDF document, but some firms prefer a hard copy and some firms prefer a website. <laughs> so before doing anything, just do your research and go check the application requirements. Um, in this video, I'm going to be covering the PDF format. 
Um, usually you don't want to send out anything more than 15 megabytes and um, nothing more than around 40 pages. Yeah, you might think that that's pretty limiting in showing the depth and breadth of your abilities as an architect. So a way around that is to create a website that showcases all of your work. A website is great because they don't need to download anything and people are pretty sensitive about having to download stuff. They can just select through the projects that they wanna see and um, you can also keep it up to date pretty easily. I would suggest you can send the PDF and just say, hey, this is my website if you wanna see more of my work. A website also means that it's searchable and apparently 80% of our employers Google us before an interview. So I think a personal website is actually a must in the 21st century but um, I'll actually cover that in my next video. So eventually, once you get invited in for an interview, you're gonna need to bring a physical hard copy to talk about your work. And I like to use something where you can, you can swap the pages. Um, I think I heard someone say that this sucks, but uh, that you should get a portfolio bound. I, I really don't care. In the end, if they're interested in my work and the contents of my portfolio, they're not gonna be like, uh, but the binder, it wasn't bound. And it's just gonna save me so much time and money and that just wins out for me. So before you start compiling your work, you just need to identify what type of position are you going for? What type of work does this firm do? What are the responsibilities? From this, you can start asking yourself, which projects should I focus on? What kind of skills do I wanna showcase? One of my mentors one time told me, if you don't wanna be doing renders, don't show renders. If you're going into a project management role, you're gonna show less renderings and less visuals and uh, more photos of the details or construction processes. Also, what level of competence does this demonstrate? And this is gonna determine what type of work and what kind of images you show. Okay, so now we're just gonna go through this step-by-step. Step. First, you need to select your projects. Obviously, you should select only your strongest and most relevant projects. But if you are not happy with some of the work and you see potential in the project, it is totally fine to redo the drawings for it. When you're just starting out, your portfolio is going to be mostly your academic work. And after about three to four years, it should be mostly your professional work with one, like maximum two academic work. Okay, so high level, I'm just gonna quickly go through what you should be striving to capture through your projects and images. So for an academic portfolio, so this would be like your first job or your first internship. So show hand sketching and drawing. <laughs> I put this first because hand sketching is like a secret weapon in architecture and it can elevate any portfolio. Your digital modeling skills, your drafting skills, visuals that tell a story, concept design, design development, site analysis, creative problem solving skills, some knowledge of construction detailing, some knowledge of sustainable design practices, some general knowledge of zoning and the building code, any extracurricular activities related to architecture, like journal articles or publications, and any other interests that align closely with architecture or the arts. And as you get further in your career and as you start seeking a more project architect role, some of these things like graphics and visuals become less important and you really want to focus on the type of project and your role on the project. So since your responsibilities become broader than just in the image creation, I think text becomes more important in describing your role and your involvement. I had a more creative layout more flexible layout for my academic portfolio, but a few years into my career, I switched into a very simple layout with uh, images or photos of the project and a little bit of text and the firm that I did the work with. Also, just a side note, the items in green are things that could be captured in your CV. Photos of built or completed work. If you have any built or completed work, this is the thing that's gonna distinguish you from a recent grad, and it's gonna give you a more experienced position and more money. So you really want to highlight this 
um, and include this in the beginning as much as possible. If the firms had professional photos of the project, then just ask them if you can use them. But sometimes uh, construction photos are just as good as showing that um, you've gone through the construction process. You should show your level of contribution. I put this one in green because you can show it through images. Uh, you want to be really, really super clear about this. And so um, by putting it in your CV as a general note and um, in the project description, you can be uh, really clear about your role. I will cover uh, the CV more in depth in another video. For images, as a general rule, you should only be using images that you produced, but if it was a rendering done by someone else, then just say that in the annotation and um, try not to use too many of them. You should also note your level of exposure on different phases of a project. You should always indicate what stage of the project you were involved in. If you have any projects that you've done from the beginning to the end, no matter how small it is, you kind of want to highlight those. You want to note your knowledge of the planning system, uh, spec writing abilities, knowledge of construction, construction drawing abilities. A good way to show your construction drawing skills is side by side with a construction photo. This is a small detail I designed on a project. And by showing it side by side with the detail that I designed, you're telling them that, yeah, you can draw details and you've gone from design to construction and that you have a good design sense. Knowledge of sustainable design, more specifically having LEED or Passive House certification can be very beneficial. It's becoming an almost uh, standard. A good knowledge of building legislation. Uh, this gets more and more important as you get further along in your career. You can show that by showing how you've navigated around local bylaws, and this can be a good topic of discussion at the interview. Uh, you should show your software skills and your digital skills relevant to the work that you're applying for, project management skills, teamwork. This can be reinforced in your CV or in your cover letter. Any involvement in the industry, like if you were a part of the internship council, um, if you have any blogs or articles that can be helpful. Having your own website and platform, you can start creating this. So from all of that, you can determine a format. Look at all the graphics you have and pick your top three strongest projects. And from there, decide how you want to arrange your template. So here's some examples. Is it gonna be letter size? Is it gonna be legal, tabloid, vertical, landscape? Your images will help you determine this. And then you design the layout. <laughs> this is where we get into the fun part. <laughs> the design of your portfolio is gonna demonstrate not just your work, but also your graphical ability. So the layout and arrangement is just as important as the contents. And I think this is especially important for recent grads and like first time applicants because you're gonna be mostly in charge of the graphics at the firm. I would strongly recommend using InDesign. This is an industry standard and this is, it's just kind of a basic skill that every architect should have in order to design presentations and proposals. So please, no PowerPoint. If you, God forbid, don't know InDesign, follow my link in the description and head over to Skillshare, who's kindly sponsoring this video and take any one of the InDesign courses right now. I promise you it's gonna save you hours and hours of work and headache and heartache down the line. I'm sure you've all heard of Skillshare by now. It's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes where you can explore new skills or refine existing ones like photography, sketching, or graphic design. It's also curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your curiosity takes you. Also, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. That's less than a meal. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link with the description will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Back to the list. So 
Graphically, like I mentioned in the list, try to show a wide range of media from renderings to diagrams to photographs of models. Try to make it so that each graphic complements and supports each other. And of course, you have to be mindful to not have a million pages. Firms get hundreds of applications and in reality, they're really going to be very quickly scrolling through your portfolio. So if you have a very long portfolio, that can get very annoying. You should also spend some time to think about the order of the project. You could present it chronologically from your most recent to the oldest, or you could present your best and most relevant work and then show projects that's gonna show your supplemental skills. For one of my portfolio, the first one was related to the building type that they do. And then I showed the one that showed the best process and the one that showed the most interesting design skills. And my last project was actually a competition that I did with building science students. And although this is the weakest project in the portfolio because it wasn't my personal project, it showed that I'm able to work in an interdisciplinary team and that I have knowledge about sustainable buildings and that I know the fundamentals of um, net zero buildings. So that was very important for this firm um, that did a lot of sustainable buildings. And so, yeah, that was my choice of project. You should also try to create a sense of order within the project. Maybe you could start with a simple diagram that shows the site or the concept, and then you go into the drawings. With titles and text and labels, just keep the font simple, have a maximum of two fonts, have the title, and in the description add like the year of the project, phase of the project, your involvement, and also include small captions for images. You can also show page numbers numbers for ease of navigation. And generally just try to use as little text as possible, um, just one or two paragraphs per page. And uh, the text should work with the images to grab people's attention. Most likely your readers are not gonna be reading the text, but in the slim chance that they do read all of the description paragraphs, just double, triple check that there's no spelling errors or grammatical errors, cause that looks really unprofessional. You can leave the front cover to the end because um, you might get inspiration from the design and the mood of your portfolio. Uh, there's so many examples of this and it can really depend from person to person. Don't just use your picture. I used a photo of this wood box that I designed and made. It's minimal. It shows my design capabilities, shows some materiality and um, shows that I can make stuff. I felt like it was kind of abstract enough that it could be anything. Things not to include. Old projects, work you didn't design, obviously. Bad projects boring projects or like projects that you hate. Do not include long text. Um, have some sort of hierarchy in the text, like uh, with headings. Do not show irrelevant work experience. If you worked at McDonald's, although I personally learned a lot of applicable life skills from McDonald's, uh, do not show that. Do not show random hobbies unless you feel it will contribute to the firm culture. Here in Vancouver, there's a lot of firms where the principals are like really, really, really into cycling. So if you are a cyclist, you could add that in your hobbies. But otherwise, just um, nobody cares about your random hobbies. In general, if you're just out of school, your biggest contribution is most likely gonna be like schematic design, design development, and modeling knowledge of the programs. This is gonna be your superpower because a lot of the older people at the firm, they won't be as efficient at doing visualization. Like uh, that's doing renderings or diagramming or putting together presentations, um, digital modeling. So really try to show off these skills. Last but not least, I mentioned that I have these portfolio templates and it's gonna cost you what you're gonna charge for that. Don't you remember what it was like? Um... Okay guys, so I decided to give them away for free. I know that this is a hard process and I just wanna ease the pain a little bit. Um, you can follow the link in the description and download your templates. All I'm asking you to do is like and comment on this video 
you guys know how much the comments help with the algorithm. And remember this favor. Forever. Okay, I hope you guys found this video helpful. And I just want to add one last note that sometimes the rejection doesn't have anything to do with you. They're just looking for someone very specific and um, you just don't fit that role. Um, so don't feel too bad and just keep trying. I'm actually not a huge fan of this uh, practice of being judged by your portfolio because your worth is not defined by your work. And that's why I'm gonna be following up with videos where you can show off your other skills, um, like how to write your resume and your cover letter and the benefits of having an online presence and also some interview tips and tricks. And um, I'll also talk about how you can talk about your work and your experience. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, I'm actually not able to answer any emails right now because I, um, I have an insane workload. Um, I hope you guys can understand, but I'll definitely answer any questions in the comment section. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.